What's up guys, it's me Jeremy, and welcome to my guide to team fighting. Although it happens very often, team fighting is a very complicated aspect of the game. Let's get started. Let's start by describing a team fight. A team fight is of course where both teams fight it out to see who can come on top, but there are quite a few characteristics to notice. There are three parts, or lines, to a team fight. The front, middle, and back lines. The front lines try to create an impassable wall and lead the charge and initiation into the enemy team. These people are often diving your opponent's back lines and are usually really tanky or are assassins. The mid line is the players who have a good balance between tankiness and damage to be able to kill tanks or they are trying to kite and peel for the back line. The back line is of course the champions that do a ton of damage but die really fast and thus must stay in the back to be protected. It can also include champions that are squishy that are trying to protect the carries as well. It's very important to know which line you are a part of, so analyze your champion and know your role in a team fight. And now with that beautiful segue, let's talk about roles during a team fight. The AD carry role is fairly simple. Stay in the back line and try to do as much damage to the best targets that you can hit safely. The support also has a fairly simple role too. Kite, peel, and protect the back line of your team while using your crowd control abilities in the best way that you can. This often involves being in the back line, but it can also mean being in the mid line sometimes if you're tanky enough. But as long as you're kiting for your team and not dying, it shouldn't really matter that much. Now the other roles aren't as simple. The mid laner can fit into any three of the lines. A champion like Diana does great in the front line because she's solid at diving into the enemy team and also gets very tanky. A champion like Ryze is a phenomenal person for the mid line because he gets tanky enough and does tons of sustained DPS, and thus is great at killing the enemy front line. In addition, a champion like Lux might want to stay in the back line because she's extremely squishy but does a ton of damage at very high ranges, so she has access to hit the different lines of the enemy while staying in the back line. The top laner and junglers can fit into the mid line or the front line. It depends on your composition really. If they need to dive the opponent's back and mid lines, those players should be in the front line. If they need to kite and or do sustained DPS, they can stay in the mid line. For example, a champion like Jarvan often needs to be in the front line because of his incredible diving potential, tankiness, and ability to initiate fights, while a champion like Jace might want to stay in the mid line so he can survive and still do tons of DPS. It's important to note that not every team comp has all three lines. Many team compositions are missing a mid line and some are even missing a back or front line. You need to analyze your team and position accordingly, which brings me into my next point, positioning. Positioning in team fights is actually fairly simple. It's just a lot harder than it sounds. Have your front line go in and start the fight while your mid line stays in between your front and back line, while your back line, of course, stays in the back. It's definitely not as simple as it sounds, but remember that a solid initiation from a front line player will set up that position needed because the back line can safely stay in the back while the midline moves into position. But remember that you should always be aware of which line you are a part of so that you can position properly and perform your role adequately. Now let's talk about the actual team fight. There are two parts of team fighting, the initiation phase and then the fight phase. The initiation is something that actually decides the majority of team fights. This is of course when the fight starts and the positions fall into place. Before the initiation, you need to have your lines set up. That way it will be hard for the opponents to initiate onto you. Start by having your initiator initiate onto them and then have your team set up the positioning to be able to perform your roles in the fight in an optimal way. It's good to note that the best initiations happen on someone that is caught out. When you see someone caught out and in the wrong line, just jump on them for an easy catch and an easily won fight. It's important that you do not hesitate because people don't expect random initiates a lot of the time and if you can catch them out when they make that one so ever slight misstep that they usually get away with, and then you capitalize on it, winning fights can become extremely easy. Now on to the fight phase. The strategies for this phase is fairly simple. Everyone assembles into their respective lines and performs their respective roles as mentioned earlier. Hit your crowd control on the best targets that you can, and try to protect your carries while trying to kill your opponent's carries if you can. I did go over this in a previous video, but I'd like to mention it again, and it should be noted that diving usually isn't that good of an idea unless you have a team composition for it because kiting is such a strong mechanic in the game. Heck, kiting is why the support role exists and is viable, because they can kite so well and thus be very useful in teamfights despite not being able to do that much damage. 
And this brings me to my next point actually, which is knowing your team composition. It's very important to understand your team comp. If your comp has no midline, then your AD carry must be ready to survive a very strong dive onto them. Vice versa, if your team has a strong midline, your AD carry must be ready for heavy protection and be able to do tons of damage in fights. Some comps, like a poke comp, don't even want to team fight at all and thus have no front line, so you need to be ready to avoid initiations. I'm not going to go into the specifics of every comp right now, but knowing what your team comp is and how to play it will give you a very solid idea of how to position and what to do during fights. In addition, you need to know your opponent's composition too. If they have no front line, you can be trying to start team fights a ton, but if they have a strong midline, you don't want to dive into their back line because it'll be very hard and you can get kited very easily, and other things like that. Recall all the information I listed and realize that that is what your opponents will be doing. If any one of them is in a line that they shouldn't be, that almost always leaves a target open that can easily be picked off and focused down. Or if your opponents team fight poorly, take advantage of that and focus them down too. It's all about outplaying your opponents. And I think that just about wraps up my tips for team fighting. I hope you enjoyed my phenomenal segues in this video, and I'd love it if you could support me with a like or some feedback in the comments. And if you have any questions, you can join me in the North American chat room, Gaming Curios, of which I am always in when I go online. Please subscribe for more awesome content in the future if you enjoyed this video, and I would love it if you could follow me on Facebook or Twitter, of which I will have links in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.